This is part 74 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing client-side validation in ASP.NET Core. We discussed implementing server-side validation in parts 42 and 43 of this ASP.NET Core tutorial. Server-side validation is implemented by using validation attributes such as required, string length, etc. As the name implies, server-side validation is done on the server. So there is a round trip between the client browser and the web server. The request has to be sent over the network to the web server for processing. This means if the network is slow or if the server is busy processing other requests, the end user may have to wait a few seconds and it also increases load on the server. This validation can be performed on the client machine itself, which means there is no round trip to the server, no waiting time, client has instant feedback and the load on the server is also reduced to a great extent. Now consider this login view. We've got two input fields, email and password. The model for this view is this login view model class and these two input fields on the view email and password are bound to these two properties that is email and password within the login view model class to make the input fields required all we did was decorate the corresponding properties within the login view model with required attributes at this point if we try to log in without providing values for email and password fields we get required validation errors at the moment, this validation is happening on the server. We can very easily prove this. Our project is running in debug mode. We already have a breakpoint on the login action of our account controller. Now let's try to log in without providing values for email and password. Notice our breakpoint is hit and if I continue the execution, we see the validation errors as expected. The point that I'm trying to make is to implement server-side validation, we decorate the respective model class properties with the validation attributes like required, string length, etc. Now to implement client-side validation, we can make use of these same validation attributes. To get the client-side validation working in ASP.NET Core, we need these three script files in the order that is specified right here. In our project, we already included a reference to jQuery. So if we take a look at our layout view, notice jQuery is already referenced here. At the moment, our project is still running in debug mode. Let's stop it first. In addition to jQuery, we also need this client-side library, jQuery.validate.js. I'm going to use library manager to install this client-side library. So right-click on the project name, add client-side library, Notice, as I type jQuery, we get IntelliSense as well. The client-side library that we want to install is jQuery Validate. So I select that and then click the Install button. If we take a look at the lib folder, notice we have a folder for jQuery Validation Library and we want to reference jQuery.Validate.js and we want to do that after jQuery. So let me drag and drop it right after jQuery. Finally, we also need this client-side library, jQuery.validate.unobtrusive.js. So let's use Library Manager one more time and install this unobtrusive validation library. Search for jQuery validation unobtrusive. And then finally click the install button. There we go. We have a folder for jQuery validation unobtrusive. Let's drag and drop this script file after jQuery.validate.js. If you're wondering why is this called unobtrusive validation? Well, unobtrusive validation allows us to take the existing server-side validation attributes and use them to implement client-side validation. And that's exactly what we are doing here. We did not write a single line of custom JavaScript code to implement the client-side validation. All we need is these three script files in the order that is specified right here. With these three script files in place, let's run our project in debug mode one more time. There we go. We have our list page. Now let's get to the login page and try to log in without providing email and password. 
Notice we get our required validation errors as expected. At the moment, this validation is happening on the client machine without a round trip to the server. And we can be sure about that because at the moment within our account controller, we still have the breakpoint on our login action. And when we click the login button, this breakpoint is not hit. So the validation is happening on the client machine. Notice we also have instant feedback. As soon as I start to type in the password field, the required validation error disappears. As soon as I delete that last one character, the required validation error reappears immediately because at the moment the validation is happening on the client machine without a round trip to the server. So this means the load on the server is also reduced and we have a great user experience. As the name implies, this unobtrusive validation is done by this client-side library jQuery.validate.unobtrusive.js and this library is built on top of jQuery.validate.js and this library has a dependency on jQuery. So this is the reason we need to reference these three script files in the order that is specified right here. And to install these client-side libraries, we used Library Manager. We discussed Library Manager in detail in part 34 of this video series. Now let's understand how client-side validation actually works in ASP.NET Core. If we take a look at our login view, notice we're using the input tag helper to generate an input field for email. And this input field is bound to email property of our login view model. And if we take a look at our login view model, the email property is decorated with the required attribute and the email address attributes. Now, if we take a look at the generated HTML, let me zoom this in a bit. Notice the HTML that is generated for this email input field. There are several data dash attributes. So tag helpers in ASP.NET Core work in combination with the validation attributes and generate these data dash attributes. These attributes allow us to add extra information to an HTML element. In this case, these data dash val attributes carry all the required information to perform the client side validation. The unobtrusive validation library, that is jQuery.validate.unobtrusive.js, reads these data dash val attributes and performs the client side validation. Next, let's look at some of the common reasons why client side validation may not be working on your machine. Make sure in the browser that you are using, JavaScript is enabled. If it's disabled, client-side validation will not work. All the three validation scripts must be loaded in the order that is specified right here. Also, make sure these scripts are loaded for the environment that you are testing against. At the moment, if we take a look at launch settings.json file, Notice the ASP.NET Core environment variable value is set to development and for development environment, we are loading the required script files. So if we run this project in the development environment, client-side validation works as expected. But if you look at a non-development environment such as staging or production, we are not loading these three script files. So if we change the ASP.NET Core environment variable value to staging or production and then run this project, client-side validation will not work because for a non-development environment, we are not loading the required script files. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.